Hello, my name is Simeon Gilbert. For the last 10 years, I've been in the process of inventing a self-regulating, fully pneumatic suspension system. Did you know that even now, over half the world's roads are unpaved, and even many of those are in very poor condition? Please join me on the journey of developing a suspension system suitable for those unpaved roads. I've nicknamed my suspension system Levitation, as I believe it can smooth the journey no matter how rough the road, increasing efficiency and accessibility. Conventional suspension consists of steel springs and hydraulic dampers and can be near perfectly tuned for racing applications. But for most utility applications, conventional suspension is tuned for a half load situation as the best compromise. This results in a rather soft wallowy ride when fully loaded or a high stiff ride when empty as we see here. Even with the stiffer, longer compression available while empty, rough road use regularly bottoms out the suspension, quickly resulting in damage like this. Around the year 2000, I decided to try and design a suspension system that adapted itself to suit the current load. After researching existing designs and exploring many ideas, the brainwave finally came to me in 2008 while working in Africa. After seven years of thought, I now actually had something to build. Over the next two years, I spent well over a thousand hours on my old lathe, turning an idea into a reality, literally. As we mentioned, conventional suspension, consisting of steel springs and hydraulic dampers, can be near perfectly tuned for racing applications on rough roads and off-road, where the weight of the vehicle is relatively consistent. However, the varying load situations and unpredictably rough roads that are encountered by utility vehicles serving in agroforestry, military, exploration and humanitarian services such as emergency vehicles and disaster relief shows a serious compromise in the conventional suspension. The basic goal of Levitation Development Project was to build a fully pneumatic suspension system that regulates itself in relation to the load. It was to maintain the optimum desired ride height regardless of how the vehicle was loaded while also modifying the spring rate and damping characteristics to suit that current load situation. It was to achieve all this without any external linkages or electronics and sensors. I also incorporated infinitely progressive spring rate to the limits of travel with the aim to largely eliminate the shock loading associated with bottoming out and overextension. Over and above this, the units were to provide a spring rate that is stiffer in a high velocity compression than it is during a low velocity compression. And even stranger, it is to have a different spring curve on the compression than on the rebound. This is made possible due to avoiding the use of oil and instead damping via the same gas that is providing the spring effect. There are several knock-on advantages of this that deserve further research. This should provide an improved suspension system that is particularly suitable to vehicles negotiating uneven surfaces while carrying varying loads. Over the years there have been many air suspension systems that achieve some of these mentioned goals. The improvements this project aims to provide is bringing all these goals into one unit. Also by eliminating external linkages, electronics and sensors, the units should be rugged enough that any issue can be fixed in the field with simple tools and limited skill. This becomes essential on rough remote roads as the more remote the area, the more vital load carrying transport becomes and help is often far away. I machined, built and tested a first set of prototypes. They showed the concept had promise but they also pointed out several issues that had to be improved. I then machined and built a second set of prototypes which is what we see here. With the units installed it was time to go and test them. Really the footage speaks for itself. Ground following is exceptional, giving great feel, control and traction. The front and rear prototype suspension units are identical with regard to bore, stroke and feed pressure. Yet even though the front of the empty Subaru is about twice the weight of the rear, we can see both ends are sitting at the desired ride height. The spring rates and damping are well matched to the axle loading and the car is running level and nicely balanced. 
This proves the units are regulating themselves in response to the load they are carrying. Also, the suspension is never bottoming out, no matter how hard we hit those bumps. The ride, even on a very rough ground while going quite fast, is still pretty comfortable. Imagine pickups, trucks, vans and other utility vehicles driving at their optimum comfort level, ride height and handling regardless of whether they are empty, fully loaded or only half full. So far we've talked about the fun part of inventing, the research and designing, the inspiration, the building the first prototypes and best of all testing them out to the max. However, before you and I will be able to have an everyday use vehicle fitted with this system, it needs to go into production. And before that can happen, there needs to be a fair bit more research and development. I've been led to believe that for a company to be able to justify investing in the necessary R&D to launch production, they would require the protection of a patent and the temporary monopoly it provides. Without the incentive of a patent, the needed refining development may never happen, and this suspension may never become available to those who need it most. My New Zealand patent will be granted in the next couple of weeks. I've picked seven other countries that I believe are the most critical to cover for this project to appeal to a manufacturer. The initial cost of filing the patent in these seven countries has been quoted at about 30,000 New Zealand dollars. Frankly, I don't have that. Over the last 10 years, I've invested heavily with time and money in this project, but now both are running out. The problem is, the deadline for filing in these other countries is in February 2012, so it is a matter of days. So, I'm asking you to help. I've chosen the crowdfunding approach, as it is an all-or-nothing system, and the donors get a reward for their donation. It is on a pledge system, and if we don't reach the funding goal, then none of the pledges become donations. If you find this project interesting, see a need for it, and feel it is worthy of success, then please get behind it. Have a look at the Levitation Development Project Pledge Me page. Check out the rewards. There might be something there that you really like. Please bring up the project in conversation with friends, colleagues and family. Find the Pledge Me page and the Facebook page and other YouTube videos, then link, like and share. We have only till the 5th of February to generate the funds on PledgeMe. There should be around 30,000 people hearing of this crowdfunding project over this coming week. So if everyone gave only $1, it would be a success. Can we do it? Sure. But will we? Come on, let's see if we can get levitation off the ground.